Before knives were a mess of patents and tactical bullshit, there existed only useful, boring designs that made anyone who carried them look like a lame ass that couldn't knife fight their way out of a zombie fantasy marketing video. In the modern world where crime rates and deaths in armed conflict are in decline, it sure makes a lot of sense that the market is awash in Bear grill sawbacks and push daggers at a time where we don't even kill the meat we eat anymore. And I swear to God, if someone tells me technically the Gerber sawbacks aren't Bear Grylls branded, I'm going to review only Gear Best knockoffs from here on out. Now, before I get any further on the tangent that the current knife market is pretty far removed from reality, let's look at the dimensions of the subject of this review the traditional French pocket knife almost unchanged since 1890. The open L, number eight. Like the overall length and weight. The blade size and the cutting edge. Note that the eight here in the model number refers to the rough blade length in centimeters. The handle size, the grip area. Spine thickness, handle thickness. and the widest part closed. OpenL has been making these traditional folders in France since 1890-ish. This style of knife can be had in multiple blade lengths, larger and smaller than the OpenL 8. You can also get a blade in Sandvik stainless steel, or you can choose the X90 carbon steel variant, which is reviewed here. Remember the 8 in OpenL number refers to the size of the blade in centimeters. But if, for example, you bought the OpenL number 2, people would make fun of you for your small knife because the 2 refers to 2 centimeters and your small penis. That's why you buy the OpenL number 13 instead, so everyone can respect you and your big 13 inch blade. The carbon steel number 8 here features a thin, convex ground blade shape known as a Yatagon. I attempted it at least, which resembles a very slight clip point style blade. Now, you would buy the stainless steel version if you wanted it to resist rust and discoloration with use. I don't care about discoloration and I generally dry fluids like water and urine from the blades before closing them, so the carbon steel works well for me. Since these blades are relatively thin, with a very thin edge, expect to have to sharpen more often than a thicker tactical knife. The OpenL is an ideal style knife for food prep or light everyday carry stuff, cutting tie line, opening packages, and more. If you want a knife you can build a shelter with because you don't believe in tents, get a big fixed blade. The OpenL number 8 can be had in varieties with synthetic handles or fancy woods, but the basic carbon steel number 8 that you can buy on Amazon for, I don't know, 12 to 15 bucks, has a handle made from a solid piece of beech tree wood. The stabilized wood has been finished with some sort of stain or varnish or maybe the spit of a Frenchman, I'm not sure. It's comfortable and slightly bulbous and fits most types of hands very well. The larger the OpenL model, of course, the larger the handle. So if you feel the OpenL 8 is a little too small of a handle for your ogre sized hands, size up to a larger one. The 8 fits my hand great and note there's not really much of a ricasso or keyon on the knife so if you tend to use your knives in extreme ways like stabbing ways, well, don't because it kind of goes right from the handle to the blade. Now the less your hand tends to move around on the handle when in use, the better, of course on a knife without finger guards. The blade locks into place on everything from the open L number 6 and up. The lock is a sleeve mechanism called a Vero block that you can twist when you lock or unlock the blade, so you can, of course, lock it open or closed. The blade is two-handed opening where you use the thumb nick to open the blade with one hand while holding the handle gently with the other. There is no pocket clip to speak of. If you want to carry a knife in just your jeans pocket, this may not be a good choice as it tends to work its way down to the bottom of your pocket and sit sideways, but you may get more attention if that happens. It's better for jacket pockets or putting in a bag and or backpack and or purse. Okay, so let's do some comparisons. Now here's the Openel, Openel, whatever. For its size, it's about as extremely lightweight as a folding knife you can get. If you count grams, it's one of the biggest handle and blade sizes you can get 
in a knife this light. This is due to the ultra lightweightness of the wood and the thin blade stock. However, if you are rough with knives, you may want a thicker blade stock. So how about a modern folder like the Paramilitary 2? It's right at about four ounces, so it's heavier, and it's one-handed opening and closing. This may not jive with some laws where you live. This is a fun knife to fidget with and use. It's a very comfortable handle too, and also has a thin cutting edge, and is fairly easy for me to maintain a sharp edge on this one. This is more of my style knife than the Open L. It has a pocket clip, which is a big requirement for me. Okay, how about another traditional French folder with a slip joint this time? The, here we go, doc doc, dauk dauk. It has a metal handle, a little more rough around the edges, meaning that like the edges of the handle aren't sanded very well. And it costs a few dollars more. I prefer the Open L because of the large, comfortable handle and longer cutting edge, and it's easier to open. Look for an upcoming review of the Dauk Dauk. Maybe it's Duck Duck. How about one more traditional design, the Higo no Kami? I reviewed this a month or two ago. It has a thicker blade stock than the Open L. The tip of the Open Ls can be bent fairly easily, so don't really try stabbing and prying with it. The Higo no Kami, though, doesn't have a lock has a thicker blade stock, it's not gonna bend at the tip, but it is more rough around the edges too. The blade centering sucks, and the edge of the blade, when you close it, hits the, the back of the handle. That does not happen on the open L. Well, actually it does, but it's wood, and wood is softer than metal, so it's not gonna damage your blade. All right, let's wrap it up. The open L number eight is a great starter knife for someone, or a gift knife. It's cheap, very easy to sharpen, it should last a long time unless the person abuses the knife, like stuff you see on this channel sometimes. It's not something I'd carry often, mainly because it doesn't have a pocket clip, but maybe if they were to ever make a leather pouch with a pocket clip on it, that would actually be nice. No one seems to make those. Also, the knife is a bit too thin and bendy near the blade tip, and really isn't that fun to fidget with. But if you use your knives more than fidget with them, then maybe it's a good choice. It has an extremely comfortable handle. Also, it must be noted, OpenL says go with the stainless steel option if you tend to use your knife in wet conditions and use it to eat with, as in the stainless edge holds its edge better when in contact with harder materials like the porcelain on dinner plates. Remember, knives and porcelain plates, you know, that's a good way to dull your knife. I don't know if some people think about that or not. Anyway, if you like this review, subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment. Also, buying the knife from the link below can help support my channel or don't buy it if you don't want to support it. Thank you for watching.